locker room and we'll get more on him as this game goes on that everyone's got around him has got to pick it up a little bit. So after the sack it's second and 17. From the 51 yard line. A lot of time but nobody open. Ray has to pull down and he takes a hit inside the 45. See if he got it into Prefontaine range. Ricky Ray was influenced a little bit by the way Corey Boyd's been running because he should hook slide in this scenario. Because of the sack, he had a long way to go to move the chains. Wasn't going to get there. Go down here, he doesn't, and you're right. That fortunate it didn't take the worst blow here. Looked like Brandon Smith came up with the top, hit his own man. Chris McCoy in on that tackle and here's Prefontaine who missed two from short range last week adapting to a new long snapper and holder and has missed this from 50 and it's brought out and that might not have been the best decision good cover by the Argos as they pin Larry Taylor inside the five but Prefontaine now two for five on the season yeah I wouldn't be too worried about that last one. That was a long kick, and it's as good as a punt for the Argos the way it worked out. But last week, it was an off day. I mean, and he is getting used to new holder, and he is getting used to a system there, but no excuses. And he said that to me before the game. He said, no, no excuses. It was a bad game, and it won't happen again. Now, that, that's a long one. Can't really blame him for that one. When you think about it, they, they lost five points on the two missed field goals. Yeah. They probably. had a dropped ball in the end zone by Chad Owens and another touchdown called back by penalty or they were 1-0 coming out of Edmonton woulda shoulda coulda here's the Marcus Coker taking the handoff and Coker to the five yard line again Kevin Glenn in relief of an injured Drew Tate if you're just joining us Lamarcus well, Coker was a healthy scratch a week ago due to the Canadian ratio and he's back in now. We'll take a series to give John Cornish a rest. First time we saw him last year, a 75-yard touchdown run. Touchdown Atlantic. Second and long from his end zone. In the flat, incomplete. Looking for Chris Bowman. You mentioned what does a team, the teammates of the injured quarterback do? How do they rally behind the injury and, and come up and try to take it up a notch? Well, on the other side, when the opposition the defense sees a quarterback, the starting quarterback go down, they get fired up. It's like a chance to pad your stats. Now, that's in a normal situation, but with Kevin Glenn, a veteran, it changes it a little bit. They've got a guy coming off the bench playing in his 100 CFL game over 32,000 yards. Yeah, so a little different scenario there. Rob Maver in the end zone. We anticipate a safety, but nope. no, Maver's going to boot it out. Well, that's an interesting decision. Right there, Owens, look at the no yards. And Owens with a great return. Down to the 25-yard line. I think the safety was the smarter move there. Yes, it probably was. On TSN and TSN Mobile TV. And Drew Tate coming back as a spectator now. And um, I think that tells you where the injury was yeah, suffered. Absolutely. That's where the ice is up on his shoulder. And he's got that sling keeping his arm still. Tate was five for six. Uh, Morley offside the no yards penalty against Calgary declined as Owens return was greater than the 15 yards 39 yard punt by Rob Maver and uh, again we were surprised that Calgary would kick out outside of Calgary number 31 yeah a five yard penalty remains first down yeah that you know honestly I, I, I like since the rule change and, and after a safety the kickoff was moved back there's been less of the giving up of a safety, but that time Calgary was so deep in their end zone. I mean, you get a return from Owens and you're in field goal position already. So instead of giving up two, you've given up three, possibility of six. First and five. Boy breaks side. First down. Oh. And Corey Boyd <laughs> is going to be a 
Tough man to wrestle down. Uh, it's it's never been, it hasn't all, all game long here been the first guy or the second. He waits till the entire team gets there and is still driving. Good sign for Toronto, but scoring in the red zone so important to keep pace with a team. The Calgary Stampeders started out 1-0 and with a big win in, against Montreal last week. Eight carries last week for 48. Already seven carries this afternoon for Corey Boyd. Injured Argonaut, and this will be a concern. Wayne Smith, the left tackle. Argos opting to go all Canadian on the offensive line. You know, Corey Boyd's been the heart and soul of this offense for the last two years in Toronto. It will evolve with Ricky Ray as their quarterback, but they're both equally as important. When you have Ricky Ray, your offense is going to run through Ricky Ray. And, um, you know, Corey's known that from, from the start. And uh, to a degree, I think he's embraced it. We want to run the ball more. I want to run the ball more. We have to be more efficient when we do that. And that, that takes some of the pressure off of Ricky. And so I think those two coexist together and, and can kind of release some of the pressure that each of them carries into a game. Well, it's worked so far the way they've designed it although they're down by seven the offense has been productive so far Jonathan St. Pierre comes into the game for Wayne Smith he'll play at left guard and center Gagne Marcoux will kick out to left tackle first down short drop for Ray and Owens who got tied up in double coverage and it falls incomplete well Owens and and Jason Barnes ended up right beside each other and that's not supposed to happen offensively you can take a look at Chad Owens here watch how he goes up and then is going trying to get to the corner he's jammed there but you see 81 flash in front of him there shouldn't be two receivers that close to each other So second and 10 from the 11. Ray, it's complete. Spencer Watt, another catch, but brought down quickly by Fred Bennett. And it will be third down, and the field goal unit will come on. And of SFU, just a little spin move, and Morley closes quickly. So it will be a 14-yard field goal attempt for Prefontaine. Missed from 24 and 32 in that game at Commonwealth last week. That's three, and the Argos now trail by four here in the second quarter. The lead, and we join Catherine Dolan. Well, Chris, this year coming into the season, Nick Lewis said in years past, he always comes into the season expecting football to give to him, whereas he says his personal life is going so well now that he's got a different sort of expectation coming into the season, and he says he doesn't have that expectation of what football is going to give to him. Why is his personal life going so well that he's able to relax and enjoy football more? Well, he says in the offseason, he goes back to Texas and he coaches football. This year, four of his players are going to college. Coach Lewis, wow. Coach him up. Put on a clinic last week, I know that. Here's Larry Taylor. And he bounced off that contact and up to the 40. Another good return for Taylor. Well, he said he felt like he was in a car crash the day after the Canada Day 12 catch game. I imagine some of the Alouette defenders who tried to bring him down felt the same. Yeah. Yeah. There's some kind of game. Here comes the hurdle. Moved into 24th spot on the all-time receiving list with the performance last week. If he stays on pace, he could be in the top 13 by the end of the year. Flags fly. A completion by Kevin Glenn. 
to Mark Way McDaniel. Looks like it's coming back. Well, Nick's the last of the veterans left with the departures of Henry Burris, Kenyon Rambo, mm -hmm. Joffrey Reynolds. Offside, Calgary, number 82. It's a five yard penalty, remains first down. And on cue, Nick Lewis is the man who is offside. A little bit of a jump. Numbers career-wise for Nick Lewis, just shy of 10,000 yards. Should be able to get that if it stays healthy all season this year. <laughs> and eight straight 1,000-yard seasons. And as Dave mentioned in the pregame show, it's Nicasso. Oh. <laughs> John Cornish. And he is met at the 40-yard line, sandwiched there. And he gets up pushing, and Robert McCune with a little back dive. As the former teammates get involved, we saw Cornish last week early on get out of the pile and uh, yeah, push a defender. You know, I, I'm not sure we'll ever see Robert McCune take <laughs> a dive like this again. I mean, he, he redefines tough. Whoa, that's an Army guy there. National Guard for six years, <laughs> trying to draw the flag. Seven tackles in game one as a middle linebacker for the Argos. Second and ten, Glenn fires it out there, and he's got McDaniel for the catch. Markway McDaniel with the catch, working against Ahmad Carroll. Yeah, and he had to fight to get back to that football. Strong hands that, in that case from Markway McDaniel. Made plays in the preseason. Was hit and miss as to who would start the year between he and Landon Talley. Landon Talley was there longer been a Calgary Stampeder longer so he starts week one but in week two it's been McDaniel we saw in the preseason a touchdown catch and a two-point convert in the late stages of a win against Edmonton quite frankly I was a little surprised that the Toronto Argonauts who were really receiver thin yeah did not take McDaniel off waivers when he was released by the Hamilton Tiger Cats got an equipment problem and Stanley Bryant yeah. has to head off. It looks like something's wrong with his helmet. He won't be able to do up his chin strap and therefore he has to leave the field and get it fixed. Top O lineman for the Stamps last year, the right tackle. First down into Argo territory, a football and the Argos are on it. Out of the hands of John Cornish and into the hands of 21-year-old Armand Armstead. Let's take a look at the exchange between Kevin Glenn and his running back here. I thought originally it was a little bit low. Cornish wants to keep his eyes upfield. You can't look at the football. You see Cornish's eyes are upfield. And that ball just a little bit low right around his waist from Kevin Glenn. Got a good look at it there, didn't you? So Armstead, the first takeaway by the Argos, turnovers even at one apiece. Corey Boyd, and there's Charleston Hughes, the defensive end waiting for him in the hole. That was a cool look. In fact, let's take one more look at that cool look because it's a great example here of, of the running back's eyes and where he has to be. Look at corners where he's looking. He's straight here. He cannot look down at the football. That football's got to be up in this area right here. Then he can handle it cleanly. Gets down low in his waist. He has issues with it. Argos recover. Ray looking at second and nine, and he wants to call a timeout. He'll go to the bench and confer timeout. with Scott Milanovic. Toronto. We saw Eric Fraser come down towards the line of scrimmage, the free safety. And that likely meant he was going to come on a blitz, and clearly Ricky Ray did not have the right play call to handle that. Talking about how the Argos let it slip away last week, they, they outstatted the Eskimos in, in all the offensive categories in that game. But again, the mistakes bit them, the missed field goals, and... Uh, 
Had 18 penalties that Scott Milanovic said was too many for two games worth. They have been much more disciplined so far this afternoon. Bunch formation to the wide side on second and nine. And time. And Inman wide open. Got it. Dontrell Inman touchdown. 55 yards as Inman atones for one off his hands that led to a Calgary interception and touchdown. Toronto Argonauts went with that bunch, but usually we see the bunch formation right near the tackles. This was an Argonaut formation with the bunch way outside on the numbers, and Inman is the guy who springs free on the deep route. That ball laid right in there. Throughout his career, Ricky Ray maybe has the best touch on the deep ball we've seen in a long time. 55 yards to the newcomer Inman, his first CFL touchdown. And the Argonauts have their first lead of 2012. There is the bunch formation from the Toronto Argonauts. That's going to for force Calgary to play zone defense against, against it. So they drop Brandon West in the outside third. They have Eric Fraser deep third here. But now the Argos come with this counter. They're bringing Chad Owens into the middle. Watch how he influences Brandon Smith, and that opens Inman on the outside. Perfect route running from the Toronto Argonauts to pull that zone player. Now stop it here, guys, because now you've got two players covering the deep field. That should be out here. Brandon West should be wider. Here comes Larry Taylor. Boy, he looks like he could break one this afternoon. Another good return by Taylor. 40 yards on the kick return after the 55-yard touchdown by rookie Dontrell Inman. Well, that's just perfect route running because Chad Owens pulled Brandon Smith into the middle. Ricky Ray just had to get enough time to wait for Inman to open up down the sideline, stretches out to get it, and then walks in. And Brandon Smith got caught way too far into the middle of the field right next to Eric Fraser. Maurice Mann still injured, so Inman a chance to uh, make his mark in this offense. Had a highlight reel catch last week. And his first touchdown here today. Argos lead, Calgary good field position. Kevin Glenn back to Mark Ray McDaniel. There's another Hamilton connection. I was going to say, they, sh they should have some chemistry. They know each other well from their Hamilton days. Two years ago, 998 yards for McDaniel. But a victim of the youth movement in that now deep Tiger Cat receiving core. Glenn directing traffic yes. as Forzani lines up to the wide side. First to ten. And he guns that in for Nick Lewis. Catch is made in front of Pat Watkins. This is the difference between having a veteran quarterback to come off the bench. And, and you, you saw it, how Kevin Glenn was directing traffic. If this is a young backup that hasn't had much playing time, he might not notice Forzani's going. He finally gets to the right side, but initially he was on the other side and would have lined up wrong. Kevin Glenn got him in the right spot. Twelve-year veteran. Now at the controls. Second and five. Flag down. They swing it up to Hornish, and he's not going anywhere. Ball team. Sure, if the ball did come loose or not, they've got another scrum going as they gain tackle Cornish in front of the Argo bench. Ricky Foley involved. He was pulled to the bench by the coaching staff, so they didn't get an unnecessary penalty there. See what the original call was. 